Cancer Prevention, the Role of Curcumin. Hi, I'm Dr. James Machino. You know, there are many natural agents that we hear about that, you know, show evidence that they might reduce the risk of cancer, you know, because they look good in animal studies or in experimental studies. But very few have been tested in human clinical trials. One of the exceptions to the rule is curcumin. It has been tested in humans. And the reason they chose to test it is because it, was, it showed such impressive anti-cancer properties in the experimental and animal studies that we had that it just, we had to look at it closely. Now curcumin has many uh, anti-cancer properties. We say it's multimodal because it, it affects uh, uh, cancer risk on so many different levels. I'll give you some examples. Uh, in about 40% of uh, breast cancer cases, many cases of prostate cancer and colon cancer, the person is somewhat genetically prone to the disease because they overexpress these receptors on the cell surface. They're called epidermal growth factor receptors. And if you overexpress, they have too many of them, then they sort of bump into each other and they send a signal to the cell and they cause the cell to divide way too fast. When cells divide too fast, they make more genetic mistakes. There's a greater risk cancer will show up. So if you could silence those receptors so they didn't fire so much, the cell replication rate would be slower, the risk of cancer would be lower. Curcumin is one of the agents that's been proven to actually help silence those receptors, toning them down so the cell division rate is slower. That's the primary reason they tested it in the study I'm going to mention in a moment. But it doesn't just do that. Curcumin also blocks the enzyme that aspirin blocks. You've read about aspirin reducing risk of cancer. Aspirin blocks an enzyme called the cyclooxygenase. Well, curcumin also does that. And when you do that, you block the formation of prostaglandin series 2, which is also another hormone that causes cells to divide too fast. But here's what aspirin can't do. It can't block the enzyme known as lipoxygenase. You go, what is that? It, it also converts one of the essential fats into a prostaglandin that causes cells to divide too quickly. What I'm saying is that curcumin can do that as well, and aspirin can't. Curcumin's also been shown in, in experimental studies where cancer cells are developing to block their ability to form new blood vessels. In order for tumors to keep growing, they need more blood. But if you can block that process, you're going to inhibit the chance that a tumor can really get some traction. And there are many other ways that curcumin's been shown to have anti-cancer properties. So it's multimodal, and the best news is that it's non-toxic. So they tested it in a human uh, study with really high-risk patients. These are patients that have tremendous genetic risk for colon cancer because genetically they form hundreds of polyps every six months. And if you don't go in there and take those polyps out, eventually some of those polyps will degenerate into malignant tumors. And so they have to have them removed. They said, what we see in terms of the genetic reason why these, these polyps are forming is that these people have too many of those receptors on the cell surface that I talked to you about epidermal growth factor receptors. And we saw that curcumin could help to silence them. They said, let's test it in these human subjects that have had too many of these polyps because they have too many of these receptors on the cell surface. Can we silence them enough to decrease the number of polyps and shrink the size of the polyps and make them look less malignant? And that's exactly what happened. That the group that got the curcumin supplementation, not at a super high dose, at a reasonable dose, we're able to, we saw a shrinking of the polyps by more than 60% and there were 60% fewer polyps just in a six month period. I will tell you something, there are no drugs yet that can do that. So um, because a lot of us are probably born with this epidermal growth factor receptor defect, I mean we don't, from one person to the next you don't know who has it. But I sort of assume that maybe I do because it, it accounts for so many different cancers that we see today. So I take a supplement that contains curcumin in it. And curcumin also has anti-inflammatory effects, by the way. And that's probably one of the other types of anti-cancer properties that it has. But I take curcumin in a combination with curcumin and boswellia, white willow bark extract, and ginger. Why? Because all four of them work together to have anti-inflammatory effects. When you reduce inflammation, you usually reduce the risk cancer will start. And those other herbs also have some anti-cancer properties by blocking the buildup of the prostaglandin hormones, similar to the way that aspirin works, but without the toxicity that aspirin has. You don't have the GI side effects and the liver and kidney damage. 
My point, click on the link below and read my review article on curcumin and cancer. I think if you want to help reduce your risk of cancer, you need to know about curcumin and exactly how much to take and what other herbs can work synergistically with that and how to make it really practical. All the scientific references are there so you'll know you're getting sound scientific information from me. Now at machinohealth.com you'll see my other research review papers and teaching materials, footage from my live seminars, other resources. They're all there to help you lead a long, healthy, functional life. My teaching, uh, my review papers and my teaching materials have all the scientific references. So you'll see you're getting sound scientific information on any subject that you're looking for. So you should make machinohealth.com an ongoing reliable resource of health and wellness information for both you and your family. Thanks so much for watching.